Hello, hello. Third episode of Untangling Tourism Tech, live from the very picturesque Food I Am in Wagga Wagga. So we're going to sit down now that you've seen the beautiful surroundings. Yeah, we're Sorry. at we're at the local government New South Wales Visitor Economy Conference. So we attend this try to attend it most years the last few years it's a really great event because this is where all of the tourism officers and people involved in tourism in New South Wales regions come together out of the councils and so it's a really good opportunity for sharing and learning together etc so it's, it's great and, and for get... us to catch up again oh here we are again together awesome <laughs> awesome but what we wanted to talk about in this episode was it's just something that keeps cropping up again and again and it all it has for a long time but it's we're hearing it much more frequently again now is the risks to destination marketing organizations losing funding and really fighting to find that really strong relevance and value proposition to their members and we're working with some clients well you've been working with a lot of clients haven't you Fab, a lot in of clients terms of working on their their user journey and their website to be able to find that fantastic kind of sweet spot for commercialization. And it really started, I guess, a year ago. I think it was all brought by GA4, you know, the changeover from Google Analytics, where they started asking the question, how many leads are we passing to members? Where do people click on our website on the listing? Is it on the phone number, on the address? Is it on the email? Quite a lot actually click on the email address as opposed to the website. But um, tourism marketing organization and council really want to see the value that they bring to their local operators. And they've really started to track those leads now. Yeah, and I think that's where it begins. And this is the power of analytics, isn't it? Because if you can measure something, you can then work against a goal. So if your goal is financial independence for a start, because you're running the risks of losing government funding, then you've got to know where your relevance and that value is. So you've got to be able to measure the leads going out to your members' websites. You've got to be able to measure very clearly the bookings that you are generating on your own website or it might be through your visitor information centre that what, you're managing. What marketing campaign has actually worked to generate those leads and bookings and where to invest your funds next year. Uh, it's incredible to see that, you know, um, not that many destination marketing organisations had actually had that tracking set up to be mm. able to do that. So mm. that's where it really starts. Mm. So it starts with the analytics, but it really does open up the much bigger question of what does... Hey, this dying. <laughs> <laughs> we really should have brought the, the prop, not, shouldn't we? Hey, we're all about live. That's right. And we're live in a fantastic place. It's a bit frosty, but it's beautiful. <laughs> um, so... If you can get the analytics, then that's the starting point because financial independence comes from providing that really strong value to your local operators. And it, it, it really means that we have to start to challenge what is the right kind of DMO business model. Would a perfect world for a DMO look like complete financial independence from government with a really strong value proposition to the local operators where the DMO was the number one source of truth for inspiring planning and booking capability for the region and they weren't tied to a select set of operators who were members but are actually the best offers in their region that they want to put forward to that, their consumers. That's critical to have that trust and authority that your tourism organisation, if it wants to rank well and be the number one authority, you have to showcase the truth of mm -hmm. your whole of industry and not just specific members that have paid a membership fee. Mm. Otherwise, you're already starting, you know, not really portraying or missing out on understanding the needs of the client and matching them to what they really want to do so do, will they eventually trust you once they realize that you're only showcasing maybe a third of what the destination is about no um, so the best way to actually be relevant is actually meet the need of the customers so we believe strongly that you should be representing the whole region and find a business model that matches the needs of that customer so perhaps you know 
if you are doing memberships, perhaps there's another way to actually fund. Perhaps you should think about turning into a more commercial model um, and having staff that is sales driven, commission based, um, being able to put itineraries together. We know that using technology is really hard. I don't know about you, Liz, but we've been talking about itinerary creation, planners creation for so long. But what we see is that not many people book online directly on the destination website. So do they want to talk to people? If that's so, get them connected to someone who's ready to help them, like a local travel agent, to take their booking. I think that's the big opportunity, Fab. If we go, we want financial independence as a destination marketing organisation. We've got to look at the business model. We've got to say, if we are going to generate revenue through through booking commissions, booking fees, then we have to be the number one travel booking service for the destination, the best information source and the best way of getting booking. Think about what the customer needs now. Customers expect when they go on to a good service website, like a travel agency website, they can chat to someone, they can get help with that booking. Imagine a DMO's website offering service that was better than booking.com for their region like if that's the benchmark booking.com or Expedia I don't think it's that hard to do that better by bringing in some bit of using your tech to be high touch you've got advocates working in your business volunteers local local knowledge you really know you know your your teams know the local area and what are the best things to do and places to go and they're passionate about the vision for the destination for your visitor economy. Therefore, how do you capitalise on that as an asset and rethink your role in the, or in the destination and think about providing the best possible information and booking service and coupling that together so that customers to your website or coming to the visitor information center are raving about the service they got and that you completed an itinerary for them and booked it and at the same time as an organization you're generating fantastic value for the local operators by passing these leads and bookings on and you're increasing your revenue through this revenue stream of booking fees and commissions it's kind of like dmos are kind of halfway there Mm. they they provide the the booking service on their website or the vic they've got great content but they're not really taking a commercial focus to be the best possible sales team they can be and solve the problem like if you've got people coming to your um to your destination site or to your lga site If they want to talk to someone, don't make it hard for them to find the contact details. Make it easy. Put a pop-up, create a lead magnet or anything like that that will put um, the customer closer to a person. And if they want to talk to a person, they will be able to talk to a person and that person will be able to seal the deal and really help them. Help them have a great stay in the destination. Ask yourself, what is your sales strategy? When was the last time that your VIC staff did sales training? They probably did customer service training. They get access to that quite regularly through different services, but what about sales training? What about transparency back to the operators about the leads that you're Mm. generating? So opening up the analytics to be able to demonstrate that strong value proposition. There's like, I feel like the DMOs are sitting with these great assets and they're not that far off this. It's just rethinking the model. Commercializing the model. Yeah, commercializing. Imagine, imagine you never had government funding and you were relying purely on membership fees. Is there a better way than membership fees to actually drive that value for your operators by providing leads and bookings so that you can open up your services to everybody in the region mm-hmm. and sell the best of the region, not relying on membership and you'll have fees. And you'll have operators coming to you because you'll be communicating, you'll be selling. Everyone will want you to be their agent. Basically, you are their in-destination agent. Mm-hmm. So we'd just like people to think about that because we can see the potential. We're sitting on the other side helping people solve these problems and we really think the time is now to rethink the business model of the DMO. 
exactly what you said. All right. What I said. All right. We'll right see you up. at the next fabulous place somewhere in Australia at great businesses like this one, Food next I week. Am. Yes, <laughs> next week. See you then. See ya.